In this video, we are covering everything you need to know about state management in SwiftUI. We'll walk through all the property wrappers, including observable and bindable, introduced in iOS 17. By the end of this tutorial, you will understand exactly when to use each approach and how to avoid the common mistakes that trip up most developers. Let's start with state. This is your go-to property wrapper for managing simple state within a single view. Here's the key thing to understand. State creates a single source of truth that SwiftUI automatically watches for changes. When you tap that button, SwiftUI detects the count change and redraws the text. That's the magic of state. You don't have to manually tell the UI to update. Notice we are using private here. That's crucial because state should only be accessed by the view that owns it. Making it private prevents other views from accidentally modifying it directly. When you need to initialize state with a parameter, you have two options. Both approaches work, but the direct assignment is simpler and more readable. The underscore syntax gives you access to the underlying state wrapper if you need more advanced configuration. Binding is where things get interesting. It creates a two-way connection between a parent view state and a child view. The child can both read and modify the parent state. See how the child view can modify the parent state directly. That dollar sign syntax creates the binding, the parent passes is toggled and the child receives it as a binding. Here's a more complex example showing binding with custom data types. Notice how we can bind to properties of the bound object using the same dollar sign syntax. This is where many developers get confused. Both observed object and state object work with objects that conform to observable object, but they have very different responsibilities. The published wrapper automatically notifies SwiftUI when these properties change, just like state does for simple values. Now here's the critical difference between state object and observed object. It is a simple rule to follow. Use state object when your view creates and owns the object. Use observed object when the object is passed in from a parent view. This matters because if you use observed object in the wrong place, SwiftUI might recreate it every time the view updates. Losing all your data, that's a memory leak waiting to happen. iOS 17 introduced a cleaner approach to state management. Instead of conforming to observable object, you can also use the observable macro. Notice we don't need published anymore. The observable macro handles all the observation setup automatically. It's cleaner and more performant. Here's how to use it in your views. With observable objects, you use state instead of state object. It's more intuitive because you're treating the object like any other state. Now let's talk about bindable. You can use bindable when you need to create bindings to observable objects that are passed in from elsewhere. Bindable is perfect for this scenario. You're not creating the object, but you need to bind to its properties. Let's look at the most common mistakes and how to fix them. Using observed object instead of state object. When you're not using dependency injection, initialize with state object. Always mark your properties private unless the requirement is to modify the property from outside the declaration. And with this, we have covered the complete landscape of SwiftUI state management. From the fundamental state and binding patterns to the advanced state object and observed object approaches, plus the modern observable and bindable features. You now understand when to use each property wrapper and how to avoid the common pitfalls that causes crashes and memory leaks. If you want to master Swift UI architecture and build production ready apps, subscribe and hit the notification bell. You'll get instant access to our advanced Swift UI tutorials that deep dive into navigation, animation, and performance optimization. Check out my Swift UI mastery playlist for the complete journey from beginner to expert. This is the foundation you need to build scalable Swift UI applications. See you in the next tutorial.